Uh, welcome. I hope uh, you can hear me right now. This is Jason Ravitz, and I want to thank you for being here and for being interested in evaluation. If you have any questions or if you can't hear me, uh, I am monitoring the question area that's below the screen for you. I'm going to assume most of you work with evaluators or are evaluators, but mostly work with evaluators. And I'm hoping this talk will help you and your team make your evaluations more worthwhile. So the goal for today is to draw attention to the many different ways that evaluation can help you and to share some how-to uh, tools and strategies. Uh, first, I want to share a quick story about how I became interested in evaluation and really realized how valuable evaluation can be. I became an evaluator essentially on October 1st, 1995, at about 1.45 p.m. I was at this big meeting in DC for the first time ever, and many of my idols were at this meeting. And I was especially excited to meet these two, uh, Linda and Margaret, uh, who were far ahead of their time. Uh, Margaret was creating online learning communities in 1989, if you can believe it. And it was about halfway through the second day, we were at a big table, and I finally got up the nerve to ask a question. I said, hey, is anyone evaluating these programs, or how are people going to be evaluating? And there was almost no response, actually. <laughs> uh, we kind of moved on, and I thought, oh, well, maybe they're not that interested in evaluation, or they don't want to talk about it. Uh, but I was wrong, because something happened at the next break. Uh, Linda and Margaret both approached me on their own, and I was blown away, because these were people who I utterly admired and was trying to get up the nerve to talk to myself. Um, and they came up to me and they said, what do you know about evaluation? We know we can do better. And this was when I had the realization that I could help them by helping them evaluate better, and that they wanted help with evaluation to make their already amazing work better. So I hope I can convince you with this talk that evaluation can help your work get better too. So to start off, let's get into it. Why did Margaret and Linda want to evaluate? Why should anyone? Um, here are a few reasons to evaluate. We're just gonna watch a couple of minutes of Jeannie Century from University of Chicago talking to an audience of computer science educators in the Google Cambridge office about why they're interested in evaluation. Why evaluate? So we're going to ask you, and then we'll look at some reasons that are already there. So why evaluate? Just shout it out. Why evaluate? Make sure your programs are effective. So let me call on you. Someone else? Yes. Figure out what's not working. Right. Someone else. Yeah. Make it work even better. Yeah, for sure. Why else? Yes. Yeah, are you really having the impact that you expect to have? Another reason. Ah, storytelling, right? To help people understand what you're doing. Give yourself some very concrete information to communicate that story to others. Yeah. Someone? Yes. Ah, to get funding. Very good reason to do evaluation. Yes, another one. Yes. Why do you look in the mirror in the morning? Well, that's a question answering a question. <laughs> right? Something's right to, to make sure there is nothing bad on your face. But think about that, right? Right, exactly. Another reason you guys are pulling them out anymore. Yes. Share best practices, right? You don't know what your best practices are until you've done an evaluation to see what your best practices are. Yes. Ah, to learn how to understand diverse perspectives. Yes, justify spending, huge range of reasons. Some of them feel a little better, you know, to make improvements, to make yourself better. Some of them feel more like accountability and they're all really good reasons, all really, really good reasons. Okay, so another reason, uh, and this is how I learned about evaluation, is that evaluation is part of good design and I was a graduate student 
in instructional design and evaluation was one of the key steps and that's how I knew to ask a question about it. Um, evaluation is also essential in developing social programs. So here's a RAND Corporation guide called Getting to Outcomes and about half is devoted to evaluating and improving. Uh, before we get into the tools and processes, I'll give you a definition of evaluation. It's a form of research focused on learning in organizational context. So that's what makes it different from academic research. And it helps provide accountability and judge merit. And another unique thing about evaluation is that it's focused on stakeholder concerns. Uh, there is a profession of evaluation uh, and a number of evaluation scholars, believe it or not, and uh, one definition that is aligned with mine is to make judgments, improve programs, uh, inform programs, and understanding through systematic collection of information. That's the research piece. And the professional association defines evaluation as determining merit, worth, or value for stakeholders. The American Evaluation Association is really the premier organization for information. Uh, you can access their website at eval.org, and I'll be giving you links to resources later. So to summarize, research is usually not designed to tell you how valuable your program is, but evaluation is designed that way, with those kinds of questions in mind. Speaking of questions, don't forget that you can input questions and if you're having any issues with the presentation, feel free to type them into the question area. So the first step in planning evaluation is knowing that you need to plan. And I'm just going to highlight for a second that evaluation is really should be part of your design when you are planning your project or program. When this message hits home, it can really have a big impact, like it did for this user um, who I worked with a few years ago. Um, a lot of people design their programs and then they think about evaluation. But really, it's a more powerful design if you can include evaluation in your design. So here are some of the benefits of what happens just from thinking about evaluation early. Your communications get stronger. You're better able to tell your story. You get more timely data. Um, you're ready for data to come in, and you're ready to turn it around more quickly. And your findings are more useful because you've worked to understand different stakeholder concerns and to influence the program design to get better data. So you can't go wrong thinking about evaluation too early in a project. So these are our four steps, and I'll be providing you um, a more detailed version of this later, but I'm going to quickly walk you through what they are and some examples. So first, define the program. Second, the evaluation context. Then you get to actually plan your study. This is more like a research design step where you start with questions and that you're going to operationalize them and try to answer them. And finally, create a project management plan for how all this work is going to get done. Now, I want you to notice that this process involves working with stakeholders, and you are not developing measures or metrics until after you've identified your high-level questions in Part C. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, Defining the program. This is a process for de defining a program that we found is very useful. Uh, it's obviously a very simplified example, but you can see we've got a program designed to increase interest in computing, serving kids in an after school program with a four hour curriculum, using after school volunteers and teachers. And the short-term goal is to have kids more interested, and the long-term goal is to increase enrollment. 
Now I'll point out that there can be secondary purposes and outcomes and audiences. Uh, for example, in this case, maybe outcomes related to teacher professional development or improving the curriculum. But this is a sketch of the process we go through to def define what the program is trying to accomplish. One way people often define their program is using logic models. And I'll share more information and resources about logic models later. And here of what, here's what some people have said after engaging in just this first part of evaluation planning, using evaluation thinking to help define their program, allowed them to focus, allowed them to be strategic in a way that they hadn't been before. So after you've defined your program, uh, you want to figure out why you're evaluating and what the evaluation context is. And here we'll return to our after school CS program example. So in this case, the purpose is for being accountable for funding received. Uh, basically justifying one's existence by showing that the funds were well spent. And you could imagine accountability for specific outcomes as well. Uh, this re the reporting of these results might go to the sponsors of the program, administrators, staff, or an advisory board. And you really need to focus on what's really going to be of most interest to your audience. In this case, maybe underrepresented students. Finally, you want to understand how the evaluation is going to be used by your audience and what significant context uh, issues are in place uh, regarding the program itself or regarding the evaluation. So as we saw in Jeannie's video, there's different purposes or reasons for evaluating. Uh, here's a graphic that represents kind of a continuum between accountability and learning focused evaluations. And they're all good reasons to evaluate. Another aspect of context is where you want to focus your attention. And this is often determined by program maturity, where you might start on the left of this graph and make sure that you've identified the situation and the needs and put together a process that makes sense and can be effectively care, you know, implemented before you start really focusing on what your outcomes or long-term impact is. And this graphic is from a blog I found by Dr. George Cave, uh, November 19th, 2015, on the Summit blog. And I'll share that link later, too. So defining the evaluation context can be super helpful. Um, for example, as I said, here's a group that we we're working with that was really trying to do an impact evaluation before it was ready and realized they really were better off just understanding if the process was working as they intended. Um, and a lot of times this results in changes in the program that can hopefully happen fairly quickly if you're involved early enough. You can wait and adjust based on what you're learning from the evaluation before you go too far down the road. Finally, we get to actually planning the evaluation study. Uh, in this case, remembering to start with high level questions. So these aren't like survey items. This is like, does the program increase interest among diverse students? Starting with what you really want to know and then defining study participants, methods, then getting to what your measures should be and how you're going to analyze them. So, Along the spectrum we showed earlier, there's different types of evaluation questions, quality of implementation, how to improve, uh, versus what the results were, for example. And I want to draw attention to one of them, the unintended outcomes. Uh, this is something you don't see very often in 
a lot of studies, but it goes with actually caring about stakeholders. If you're just checking boxes to show that you've accomplished what you said you're going to accomplish, that's one thing. But if you actually talk to stakeholders, you might actually find out what people think or what the costs of program participation were. For example, uh, say that they had to quit sports to participate in your after school program. So good evaluation questions are where you want to start. You don't want to start with measures. And you want to base your measures and data collection on what you really want to know, keeping focused on the important concerns, the key issues, the stakeholder concerns, the purpose of the evaluation. And you want the questions to be useful and practical. Speaking of questions, if anyone has a question or would mind just testing out the question area, I'm a little concerned that there are none, apparently. Thank you. I'm going to keep going. So for each evaluation question, then you begin to design your study uh, based on what kind of data you need, from whom, how you're going to analyze, and what criteria you're going to use to judge the conclusions, and judge and draw conclusions. You also want to ask whose perspective do you need to collect data from? Volunteers, program participants, maybe parents or community members. And ask yourself, what are their concerns or issues? What motivates them? How can they be engaged? And what data will be useful for them? Here's an illustration I borrowed from a resource that I'll share later. The ex expert tip here is build data collection into your program activities. Think about how each person is involved in the program and build that into your collection to make it easier on them. This is another way having evaluation in the design stage is really helpful because you can get information from these people as they go through their routine steps without having to introduce additional burden through evaluation. And when you do this and you integrate evaluation into program operations, you can get some great results. So here's Tiffany Decker, who worked at the MIT Office of Education Outreach, talking about um, collecting data from incoming students in her program. And she was collecting the incoming data for purposes of evaluation, but she realized she could share that data with her teachers. And they were grateful because it helped them do their job better. So once they realized how useful the data were, they wanted more. The last thing I'll mention is creating a management plan for your evaluation. This involves defining the roles and relationships within the evaluation project, how reporting will work, what the budget will be, and what a management plan looks like. Generally, the recommendation for budget is to set aside 5% of the overall program budget for evaluation. Like if you're spending 100 bucks on something, you can throw in $5 to help evaluate it. Um, but that number can go up a lot if really the whole purpose of the program is to test an idea or a new project. Then essentially the whole project is an evaluation and the budget can be much higher. Uh, in addition, your evaluation management plan should address reporting needs, who's going to get what information when and in what format. Finally, the relationship aspect of evaluation is important to keep in mind. There's complex relationships and complex organizations that are often being served. And there's different stances that the evaluator can take. And there can be internal evaluators or external evaluators. In this scenario, the collaborative image shows the evaluator doing most of the work, but requiring an input from the team, the, the organization. And this is where a lot of these recommendations for buy-in are crucial, because you don't want to, as an evaluator, you don't want to be stuck out there doing work that's not connecting. And as a team, you don't want an evaluator going off track and wasting resources on something that's not going to be useful. A more equitable arrangement is where there's kind of rolling up sleeves together in a participatory approach. 
and then eva evaluation that's oriented on empowerment has the evaluator really just supporting the team, but the team is doing its own evaluation. So hopefully um, you can see that there's a range of ways to work with evaluators. I'm gonna show you some of the tools that we've created. Um, this is the worksheet that we use that basically walks people through this process with a little bit more detail. And we're constantly trying to update the resources and how to make these more useful. I wanted to end with some advice for leaders. It's really important that the evaluation is given the resources and the time and space that it needs and the support. So basically, we want to work with leaders when we're doing an evaluation to make sure they're bought into the design process and they understand how the results are going to be used. Uh, they're prepared to provide resources as needed and want to make sure there are clear expectations for project management. Last, of course, as stakeholders, the leaders need to provide input on key decisions, especially the logic model, the purpose of the study, what the key questions are, reporting timeline, and so on. If you are an educational leader, you kind of want to know what the progression looks like. This is a map that we've created that kind of shows the progression from starting with, you've got some measures or you're talking about evaluation a little. That's where most people usually are until they get into this. Stage two is you got those metrics and measures or methods mapped to your questions. That's basically, um, ready to go in and create a study that's going to answer those questions using the data that you can get. Finally, there's analyzing the data to answer your questions, and then using those results to influence the program. And we try to go beyond that by making sure that key stakeholders and leadership know what was learned and what was accomplished and have an opportunity to reflect on, on the project. And sometimes findings are reported more widely if there's other projects doing similar work. It's very helpful to learn from all the effort that takes place. And last, we like to see evaluation recognized as so beneficial that it becomes institutionalized into new programs in the form of budget and staff and so on. And we've been working with a lot of organizations to try to move their evaluations through this um, cycle. So. Here are, I tried to put together the resources that were presented in this talk. Uh, I think there's a few I didn't get to yet, but what I've done is I've created a Google Doc that has links to a lot of the re resources. And what I would like you to do is jot down these links and email me if you have any issues, but I have a survey for you to quickly register your interest if you're interested in the worksheet, because the worksheet is not quite ready to share, and if you fill out that survey, it will notify me to share it with you when it's ready. In the meantime, if you do complete that survey, which is entirely optional throughout, so you can just go and click through without answering anything, it's very short. Uh, it will give you a link to the resources as well, because I don't think you can link uh, to my presentation. So if that doesn't work, email me or my team. Uh, my team at Google is trying to build an evaluation culture within the company, especially on the education side and throughout the K-12, CS, and beyond education community. Uh, we provide some resource development, training, and funding, and really appreciate you being here today. And I will take this um, off the screen for a second so I can wave hello. And then I'll put it back up for a couple minutes until we're at time. So thank you again, everyone, for the moment. Let me see if I can jump in, wave hello. And again, if people have questions, please, um, please ask.
Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that you'll uh, reach out if you have any questions and fill out the information to get uh, links in the future uh, regarding the worksheet and a link to the resources that we've provided. I'm going to go back to the closing screen and see if any questions pop up in the next couple minutes. Thank you.